Hello, everyone, and thank you so much for inviting me to this presentation. My name is Shreyas Balachandran, and I'm going to be talking about the Uvalde shooting, political polarization, and the impact of influencers over time. So I'm going to first define polarization. Polarization is when different groups of people have diametrically opposed opinions on certain issues. There are many types of polarization, but one of the most corrosive is effective polarization, where these groups of people believe that the other group has bad intentions as opposed to just being misguided, so they distrust and dislike people from the other group. Common ground between Democrats and Republicans has significantly decreased over the past several decades, as this graph shows, as polarization has increased. This coincides with an increase in effective polarization. 27% of Democrats and 36% of Republicans see the other party as a threat to the nation. In my background research, I found that political polarization predates social media, but that social media can amplify certain opinions using algorithms. These algorithms create echo chambers where people only have access to certain opinions. Social media has algorithmic tools to de-escalate this phenomenon in times of crisis. To explore this phenomenon, I looked at the school shooting in Uvalde, Texas, which happened just 300 miles away from where I live. On May 24, 2022, a shooter entered Robb Elementary School and murdered 19 fourth grade students and two teachers. In the immediate aftermath of the shooting, social media activity related to gun violence spiked. And just one month after it happened, in an amazingly prompt response, President Biden signed the first bipartisan gun safety legislation in almost three decades. I wanted to investigate why there was such a quick decisive response to this shooting. And I wanted to see what role social media might have played in it. I did this using data scraping. I searched by keywords to get tweets that had to do with the Uvalde shooting. And I used the Twitter API and Python's Anaconda engine for this. I scraped 1,000 tweets using the Twitter API in both June and December of 2022 using 117 distinct keywords in a Python algorithm. Some examples include, on the anti-gun side, gun control and murder, and on the pro-gun side, freedom and 2A, standing for Second Amendment. I found that in June of 2022, there was significantly more anti-gun sentiment than there was pro-gun sentiment, while neutral sentiment was lower than it normally would be. But by December 2022, six months later, pro-gun and anti-gun sentiments were about at parity with each other, while neutral sentiment had increased by 20% relative to June. In the immediate aftermath of the Uvalde shooting, the normal bipolar pattern of equal pro-gun and anti-gun camps was broken as anti-gun sentiment surged. But by December, six months later, the normal bipolar pattern had been restored. This shows the elasticity of public opinion. Opinions might be changed temporarily by shocking events such as the Uvalde shooting, but on social media at least, I found that they returned to their prior state of polarization, showing that the echo chambers which might have been removed temporarily are coming back within six months. These patterns in general opinion reflect the patterns I found in influencer opinion, because I also did this on top influencers on Twitter. In the future, I would like to study using new tools of data analytics, machine learning, and natural language processing. I would also like to use similar techniques on other polarizing issues. I conclude that an acute shocking event like the Uvalde shooting can have a major effect on public opinion in the short term, but in the long term, its effects are limited if they exist at all, demonstrating the elasticity of public opinion, or if you prefer, the rigidity of these echo chambers. Algorithmic analysis of social media remains a major area of interest in helping us understand how opinions work, both online and in the real world. Through studying the effect of social media on polarization, 
we can come up with solutions to mitigate the negative impacts that polarization has on our society. We can find common ground and hopefully we can stop thinking of people who disagree with us as enemies. Thank you all so much for listening.